for the rest of the semester. A couple other concepts you need to understand that we need in order to really do this sort of precisely. The first is a concept from quantum mechanics called degeneracy. And physicists realize that an atom which has energy levels, and I'm putting very simple energy levels here, in many cases there's more than one way to get an electron to be that energy. There's no law that says if you have a particular energy, there can only be one state or place associated with that energy. There may be multiple ways to put the electron in there and have it have the same energy. And so what physicists use is the word degeneracy for this. Here, the degeneracy, which we use the variable g, so let's write that to represent degeneracy. Here, there's only one way to put an electron in state zero here. And so the degeneracy is one. For state one here, it turns out, and this is just random, this is just an example, that there are three states that have exactly the same energy. So in this case, the degeneracy is three. For a higher state, E2, it turns out in my example that there are two ways that you can put an electron. An electron can either be here or it can be here, but both of these electrons have the same energy, so the degeneracy is two. And this is important to know. It affects the equations, as you'll see, but we're not going to deal with degeneracy really very much in this class, but it's important that you know the concept. Another thing that you need is Boltzmann statistics. And this comes from physical chemistry. You may have had it in your semiconductor physics because this is very, very important as how semiconductors behave as a function of temperature. Um, but certainly what we're looking at is the number of states of an atom. And we know that, that there's this peaked distribution of the number of states we talked about before. And we're going to assume this atom or collection of atoms is in thermodynamic equilibrium. And that means that things have come to a steady state. That, that state N1 and N2, if you look at the large collection of atoms, N2 is pretty much constant with time. It's not changing. Um, in one's pretty much constant with time, it's not changing. And the only energy that's available that could possibly hoist this electron after it's fallen down into this lower state back up and put it again in the upper level is thermal energy. The random vibrations and collisions of atoms and molecules with one another might just, in some weird case, provide enough energy to bump that electron back up in case it's a really vigorous collision. But this heat energy is random. Okay, uh, we really can't control it, we can't deal with it. And what we're interested in, what Boltzmann statistic tells us, is let's calculate the number of atoms that are in state two compared to the atoms in state one. We'll take this ratio here. Um, if we only have thermal energy at some temperature T, and this is in degrees Kelvin, and remember that, that uh, in Kelvin, um, 273 degrees Kelvin is zero degrees Celsius. Zero degrees Kelvin is absolute zero. So T is always represented in, in uh, Kelvin. And K is Boltzmann's constant, which you can look up. Let's go ahead and calculate this number. And the ratio of N2 to N1 at some temperature T when there's only thermal energy available is the ratio of the degeneracies, which makes sense because if there are more ways to put an electron in the upper state, the degeneracy is higher. There are more odds of it being there, times this exponential term, which is the difference delta E, let's write this on here, delta E between the energy levels, and divided by Boltzmann's constant times the temperature. And at room temperature, uh, around 25 degrees Celsius, it turns out that this value is on the order of 25 milli electron volts or 0.025 electron volts and you've probably dealt with this in your semiconductors class. Um, well certainly we know that delta E for photons is just the photon energy so we can make that conversion and given that a typical photon energy is on the order of two electron volts say for orange light we have two divided by 0.025 so let me pull out my calculator and you're two enter 0.025 divide, and that turns out to be 80. And so the probability of an electron being in the upper state in 2 is e to the minus 80. And if I do that on my calculator, 
um, this number turns out to be about 1.8 times 10 to the minus 35. So you have to have about 2 or 5 times 10 to the 34th atoms in order for one electron to be in the upper state. So for optical frequencies, Boltzmann statistic tells us that all the freaking atoms are in the lower state. Okay, we're almost done with this, I promise. This is a long one. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to finally derive the relationship between the Einstein coefficients. And when we calculate that, what we find is that the rate... The rate of change of state in 2 divided by in is equal to negative in 1 because the electrons have to be in one of the two states. And what you're going to find is that by setting all three conditions to 0, you come up with a polynomial equation that's fairly easy to, fall, to solve. You also know that the ratio of state in 2 to state in 1 is given by the Boltzmann statistics. And if you plug all of that in and calculate the ratio of in 2 to in 1, you can relate Boltzmann statistics to the Einstein coefficients and the energy density of the photons. And your book goes through this derivation. Okay. What we want to get here, what we really want to understand is how the A and B coefficients are related to one another. And I'm not going to go into this in detail, but it turns out that if you know this energy density, then you can solve this equation. And it turns out that this energy density is given by Planck's black body radiation. That's something we've skipped over because the book makes a big deal of it. Um, it's very important for physics, but it's sort of a little bit of a digression. Let's just state, and we've done this in the optics class, that any object at given temperature puts off radiation. And as it puts off radiation, as, excuse me, as the temperature gets higher, the radiation shifts more to the blue, this is very, very well described by known laws of physics. It's Planck's law. You can look it up. And if you calculate the energy density from radiation and put it in here, you come up with this equation right here. So you go in, you put in rho of nu from the black body, and it turns out that B21 and B12 are simply related by the degeneracies, and we can calculate the ratio of the A and B Einstein coefficients and we come up with this expression right here. And we'll be using this in our class many times to actually calculate the rate equations for a laser. I apologize this was kind of long, but we had a lot to get to today.